Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we have a kind of different video than the usual. Today we're going to start looking at some agricultural science, some CXC level agricultural science, some high school level agricultural science. So today we're going to look, we're going to focus basically, basically for this lecture series, we're going to focus on the textbook that I have a soft copy of here. This is one of the textbooks that that I used around the region, all right, agricultural science for CSEC. That's one of the main ones that we use around the region. I managed to find a soft copy online. And uh, normally, you don't come in, it's, it doesn't have an ebook, but I managed to find this one. Someone did, went to the effort of scanning the whole textbook, and so I managed to find it. All right, so we're going to use a combination of the textbook, and we're also going to use the syllabus as the guide, but for the most part, we're going to be just discussing agriculture on a whole in the region. And so using the CXC syllabus as a kind of guide, but not fully per se. All right, so if you look at it right now, the first section in the syllabus says students should be able to, the objective here is explain the relationship between agriculture and agriculture science. So the definition and the scope of agriculture and agricultural science. Then let's explain the history of agriculture in the Caribbean with discussion of the development of agriculture in the region in pre-colonial, colonial, and post-colonial times. And then they ask about non-conventional versus conventional farming. And then they looked at uh, organic farming. But we're not going to do point one three and one four just yet. We're going to look at one one and one two, and then we're going to jump to section two the roles of agriculture and services, all right? So the first discussion we're looking at here is basically what is agriculture? And based on the textbook, we have the word agriculture comes from the Latin agriculture, meaning cultivation of the field. It covers all, this, all the arts, skills, science, industries, and services used by humans to obtain food from the land. This includes the cultivation of crops and the rearing of livestock together with the together with the related industries supplying seeds, chemical fertilizers, machinery, finance and technology. In addition, agriculture involves marketing and processing. So that in a nutshell is what agriculture basically is. So one of the best definition, definitions for agriculture would be the simple definition would be the cultivation of of crops and the rearing of animals. That's one of the simple definitions of agriculture. It can be defined as the growing of crops and the rearing of animals for the benefit of humans, for the benefit of mankind. So that's basically what agriculture is. And, and as the book says here, it incorporates a whole lot of things. Agriculture is not, uh, agricultural science is not just a one, a one trick pony. As a science, it combines a lot of different sciences out there. Biology, we're looking at animal and plant at autonomy. We're looking at chemistry, we're looking at, you know, for the synthesis respiration as chemistry right there. So it combines different sciences and also different disciplines. We have to learn how to cultivate the land, land preparation, as they say here. You have a whole other industry that comes around agriculture, such as chemical fertilizers, machinery, finance, technology. So all of this encompasses exactly what agriculture is all about. It's about getting to rear your animals, all the technology and the skills used to rear animals and to cultivate crops. So that's what agriculture and agriculture science is all about. It's all about getting the crops from, you know, from seed all the way to harvest and everything in between, marketing, after the harvesting of the market, the products and everything like that. Same thing with livestock. So, yeah, so animals that are reared by a farmer, it's called livestock, and the plants that are kept by a farmer will be called crops. So crops are plants which are grown and then harvested. Examples, carrots, pumpkins, melons, you know, you know what crops are. And livestock will be all the animals that are reared by the farmer. So you have your poultry, you have your small ruminants, you have your your pigs, you have your cattle, your large ruminants. So all those encompass what we call livestock. All right, so you have your livestock here, different examples of livestock, and you have different examples of crops that are cultivated in agriculture. 
And then now the, the syllabus asking us, explain the history of agriculture in the Caribbean. This one is very obvious and very clear because all of us know where we came from. Most of the Caribbean countries, especially the English speaking Caribbean countries, came from an agrarian economy, meaning based on agriculture. Because you know the sad reality is slavery happened. And the reason why slavery happened was to facilitate the cultivation of sugar across the region. So the cultivation of sugar. So we know our history. But even before the Europeans came and brought in African slaves, we know we had the the local Indians. We had the Tainos and the Kalinagos and uh, better known as the Caribs and Arawaks that engaged also in an agrarian society. They also dealt with agriculture. But for them, agriculture was a little bit more primitive. They normally use what they call the slash and burn technique where they cut down burn plants and then start growing. They use uh, not really Im tools that were, you know, stones and wood-based tools. You know, simple, simple hand tools. They didn't use any, fa any, any, any tractors and stuff like that. No, that's not what the, the Indians used to use. They used simple, simple mechanisms to plant and grow their crops. And then, so, agriculture evolved from that simple days, you know, the slash and burn and stuff like that, and then moved into more of the colonial days where, you know, in 1624, you had the, the, the English coming to the Caribbean and then and sink it, so Thomas Warner, and then from that, you know, they spread across the region and sugarcane was introduced sh shortly after and then the slave trade began and so we know agriculture changed to a whole plantation based system when during the colonial era whole plantation based system and we know there are remnants of that today in the caribbean where we see a lot of cane fields large cane fields large plantation large estates that came out of the colonial era of agriculture where we, where we basically had a monoculture we planted one crop and that one crop was sugarcane for the longest time and after you know 1830 after 1834 1834 we had our emancipation and so we moved into a different era post-colonial era well i can't even say that because for me post-colonial would be after our independence would have been gained and so even after that certain countries still depend heavily on agriculture for example dominica most of its gdp about 40 percent of its gdp is based on agriculture but sadly most of the other countries agriculture is not that big as it relates to a part of gdp most of the OECS countries you have agriculture contributing to less than two percent of gdp less than two percent of gdp jamaica less than two percent of less than five percent of gdp so even the agriculture might look as though a lot of people work in this sector it still is not as large a contributor to GDP as other sectors of the economy. And so you realize that in post-colonial days, agriculture took a step back somewhat because a lot of land is now being used for other things, housing, industrial parks, tourism, you know, hotels and stuff like that. A lot of good land is being used for tourism and other sectors. But nonetheless, our post-colonial agriculture saw that we diversified we diversified our offerings. So no longer was it only sugar alone, but we also offered a whole variety of different crops and animals. A lot of people now produce, you know, um, cattle, beef, produce the mutton from the, the sheep, produce a lot of pork, a lot of poultry, a lot of eggs being produced within the Caribbean region. So our agriculture post-colonial days has diversified. No longer are we only focusing on sugarcane, but we're focusing on different crops. You have your potato, your famous ginger and turmeric and those other um, nutmeg and all those things across the region. A lot of root crops. Dominica, a lot of root crops. So we know that agriculture has diversified since post-colonial times. And so that is basically a rough history of agriculture in the region. All right. So... The next thing we're going to look at now is the importance or the role of agriculture and the support services. So what is the role of agriculture basically? So agriculture contributes to a country in many ways. One of the key ways would be uh, food security. All right, food security is one of the key ways in which agriculture contributes to the region. Now, our next way is foreign exchange, of course. What is foreign exchange? That's where we produce our crops livestock 
and we sell them overseas and we get foreign currency in return we get the us the euro whatever you know you provide it to anguilla st thomas wherever the usa england europe and so we get foreign exchange and you know that foreign exchange is crucial for any economy that wants to conduct business on a global scale i mean the universal dollar is the US dollar most businesses conducted using the US dollar so we need the foreign exchange in order to facilitate our imports from other countries so agriculture is very important and as the book says here agriculture is very important to the economies of the Caribbean countries both regionally and internationally when Caribbean agriculture goods and services are sold to other countries foreign exchange is earned for example the export of banana and coffee earns foreign ex foreign currency However, when foreign agriculture goods and services are imported, carbon currency is converted to foreign exchange, importing agriculture machinery from abroad is therefore a loss to the local community. So, they're saying that it's not all about the mighty US dollar, but we still need it because our products are, are, um, are produced, services, and also our goods, we export them, and so, we get foreign currency in return and we need that in order to conduct global business as i stated earlier that's one importance of agriculture next one would be the contribution to the national product gross national product or gdp i know this might find sound foreign to some of you guys who don't do pob but gdp the gross national product is the monetary value of all goods created within an economy for a year a given year and of course the agricultural sector contributes to the economies of any given country but like i said earlier it's not as significant in all countries for example i said before dominica gdp agriculture is about 40 percent small countries like saint kitts and oasis countries who rely mainly on tourism agriculture contributes just about two percent to their gdp but nonetheless it contributes so agriculture is important because it contributes to the 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 overall monetary value of goods produced within an economy so agriculture the the gross domestic product is a measure of the current value of goods and services from all sectors of the national economy agriculture is a vital sector of the national economy and contributes to the gdp so when you harvest or you, you rear animals and sell them that contributes to the gdp of a country provides goods services jobs within that sector so as i said before food security is another big issue and another importance of agriculture and today 2020 we can see that food security is very very important we have to become self-sustained in certain self-sustaining in certain, certain goods food in particular most caribbean countries import most of their food Country, small countries import up to 90 something percent of their food that is not good because if countries you know close their borders we're in trouble we have to learn to provide our own food and enable us to be what we call food secure we need food security food security measures being self-sufficient in food most caribbean countries are now boosting their local production and reducing food imports import bills are too high in the region we need to rely more on ourselves and so we need to have agriculture being more of a focal point so that we can up and achieve food security meaning we can sustain ourselves we can feed ourselves we don't have to import as much food and that goes towards helping to reduce the import bill for, for the government and so i can use that money to spend elsewhere to boost the economy so in the caribbean food security is affected by low agricultural productivity we know that resulting from inefficient use of water and other inputs we know that we don't really have good water usage in the caribbean we rely too much on rainfall our farms are basically rain fed we don't need that we need more efficient drip irrigation systems again a decline in earnings from traditional crops resulting from the loss of trade preferences so our our sweet potatoes our, our, our bread fruits our tanya our dashin you know our cassava most people most young people today would have lost their appetite for those types of foods and so therefore what we know we are skilled in producing the market don't seem to want they want more international flavor stuff and so that that diminishes our food security a dependency on imported food results from inability to produce food locally and competitive prices 
So this is one of the reasons why we're not really that food secure because for us to produce on the same level and still be competitive is difficult. And most of you all know, you go to a supermarket, you try to buy local food, it's more expensive than imported food. That's a problem that cause us not to be food secure. We have to work on that. So apart from food security, agriculture also provides, of course, an obvious one, employment, right? Employment. A lot of people in the region are actually employed in the agricultural sector. Although agriculture contributes a little bit to GDP for most Caribbean countries, a large number of the citizens of each of these countries are involved in agriculture sector one way or the other whether it is producing processing whatever whether it is part-time even the back garden people in the backyard garden they are part of the agriculture sector so agriculture provides a lot of different type of jobs that we're going to look at later on that people can use and help a country on a whole all right well, how else does agriculture benefit a country uh how is it, or why is it important why is agriculture important? So we have some other basic information here. The production of food. So farmers produce crops and livestock. That's obvious. Agriculture provides the food that we need. Help us become food secure. Provides the raw materials used to make other goods. All right. The raw materials used to make other goods. For example, you produce your tomatoes. People take your tomatoes and make tomato paste, make ketchup and those kind of things. We just mentioned jobs before. Agriculture creates jobs from which you can farmers can earn income from their jobs. Again, we said um, foreign exchange when goods are exported. So all these are reasons why agriculture is important. Other reasons, and the most important one is it provides our basic needs. It provides our basic needs, which are food, clothing, and shelter. So that's why agriculture is in very very important. All right, so, so we know why it's important. Food, clothing, shop, we know why it's important. Now, what are some jobs, as I mentioned, careers in agriculture? So here we go. Careers and opportunities in agriculture, okay? Food production, obvious. Livestock farmer, crop farmer. Sales and marketing. So believe that or not, there are sales and marketing jobs in agriculture. Because after somebody would have produced the their, 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 their crops and livestock, somebody has to sell them. Somebody has to go and make the calls to the hotels, the supermarkets, organize delivery, transportation, that kind of stuff. So sales and marketing is a big deal in agriculture. Because I look at uh, places like um, JP in Jamaica. Jamaica, for, for the, in the Caribbean, Jamaica has one of the more mature agricultural sectors. Large scale agriculture um, production happens in Jamaica. You have CP, you have JP, you have Caribbean broilers, all those um, places that produce. You have um, the dairy farm out there that uh, I forgot the name of that company that I visited when I was in school, but they produce milk, a lot of milk, dairy, dairy, and dairy products in Jamaica. And so Jamaica has a, a very mature agriculture sector, although it's not up to the scratch of like America or something like that. Still, it's more advanced than some Caribbean countries. And so you have people with, with, with large career opportunities in agriculture in places like JP where they have to sell, you know, sell their bananas, sell the banana chips, that kind of stuff. And that's how we're talking about agro-processing right there. So sales and marketing, services. People actually can produce services in, in the agriculture sector. You have veterinarian services, you have um, land, land preparation services you buy a tractor <coughs> sell the service of preparing the land that kind of stuff you have food inspection and quality control you have your bureau of standards and those places that you know you have the radar and places like that you have the quarantine offices that you know deals with quality control food inspection that kind of stuff careers in that agro processing we take raw materials and turn them into processed goods your planting chips your, your banana chips your breadfruit chips your hot sauce your jerk sauce your what else you have your your seasonings all those things agro processing your mag mango chutney those things agro processing all right you take your raw materials and turn them into a value added product agro processing then of course you have engineering where people have to design tractors design seeders design harvesters let out farms in the best way possible build greenhouses all those things engineering and of course education where you teach jamaica has a whole case school for teaching agriculture you of course have the agriculture programs 
We have um, the Guyana School of Agriculture, GSA, Agriculture and Education there again. High school teachers teach agriculture like I'm doing right now. Agriculture and education, careers in agriculture and education. Then you have journalism, you have management and administration, and you have certification. Of course, management, administration, meaning that, of course, all companies might want a secretary, might want somebody to run an office, you might want somebody to actually manage people, because if you hire people to work on your farm, somebody have to manage payroll, manage the people itself, manage schedule and stuff like that. And of course, certification, you want to certify yourself as organic, somebody have to know, have the knowledge to know, okay, this have to be in place, so I certify you as a organic farmer, whatever. You have, to have, you have to have the knowledge to be able to certify people in certain things. And of course, you have other opportunity, career opportunities in agriculture, such as extension officers. You have a whole list here, laborers, of course, unskilled workers who work on a farm, the farmers, farmers cultivate land, and grow crops, real livestock. Then you have um, managers, as I mentioned earlier, then we have a next key one here, extension officers. These are the persons who advise the farmers. They are the link between the farmers and the whoever is the authority in that country. For example, RADA in Jamaica or the Department of Agriculture in uh, other Caribbean countries. They have extension officers that go out and liaise with farmers, help farmers um, technically with advice and stuff like that. So they are basically the link between the farmer and the authorities who are in charge of that then of course you have you have research workers you have a lot of jobs in Cardi where you have to do, you have to do research on you know different animals different crops how insects affect crops you know cross breeding how you can breed different crops so a lot of research that goes into agriculture based uh, careers then of course you have the veterinarians vets they are animal doctors they I don't even know what that is they care for the well-being of the, the animals the sick ones you have, you have animal nutritionists, they are the ones who plot out, you know, how to feed animals, what food is best for animals. Then you have a viticulturist, those are who deal with vineyards and they need to know the, the information about how to plant, you know, grapes to get wine, you know, what year, this, you know, that, that whole kind of um, stuff. Then you have agricultural engineers who, as I said before, you know, they, they, they build different equipment for agriculture specific activities and stuff like that. So all these are career opportunities in agriculture, sales and marketing, services, agro-processing, as I said earlier, engineering, education, journalism, all right? So you need somebody to be able to contribute to, you know, agriculture magazine, you know? Carico might want somebody to publish certain things. You have, uh, you know, you have certain um, shows dedicated to agriculture. So you might have to ask the right questions, publish the right books, that kind of stuff. All right, so all those are reason are careers in, in agriculture. So we look at why agriculture is important. We look at career opportunities in agriculture. And so let's look at some other careers in agriculture. All right, so we have agricultural economists. That's a somebody who deals with the business side of agriculture. You know, someone a, a actual economist who looks at you know the supply and demand within the agricultural sector, how scarce resources are allocated in the agricultural sector. So you have an economist, you have an entomologist, study of insects and how insects can affect, can be used to help you know in farming, different kind of aspects of insects. You have extension officer, as I said before, a nutritionist, veterinarian, a horticulturist, a agronomist. So all these are jobs in agriculture, all right? And so what we're going to look at now is we looked at the, we looked at section 2.1, we looked at the uh, concept of food security, uh, we looked at foreign exchange, contribution to GDP, employment, all those things. We also looked at, let's see, jobs in, um, jobs in agriculture. But we're also going to look at the other institutions that helps with agriculture. It's a very simple, straightforward one that we're going to get through very fast. So we look at roles of agriculture again. We're looking at institutions that aid with agriculture. Now we have some regional ones and we have some international ones. They can be branched accordingly. Regional, international. Regional, we have Caribbean Development Bank, CDB. We have Caribbean Research and Development Institute, CARI. We are the University of the West Indies, UWE. 
We have College of Agriculture Science and Education case. We have the University of Trinidad and Tobago. We have Guyana School of Agriculture. So all those are regional institutions that help with agriculture. You don't have to know much about them, but the book has them outlined. All right, so you have, you have CARICOM, Caribbean Community. And of course, you know, CARICOM is a trading block. And so CARICOM is used to, in agriculture, to help with facilitate trade among its member states. Then you have the CFNI, of the Caribbean Food and Nutrition Institute. The Caribbean the CFNI aims to describe, manage, and prevent nutritional problems facing Caribbean countries. It runs training courses, conduct research programs on food and nutrition, and maintains a la, um, research, library of research. Then we have the CDB, Caribbean Development Bank. Caribbean Development Bank assists Caribbean nations in financing projects for its members. So the bank, so they, they, they sponsor, not sponsor, but they allow Caribbean countries to get financing for various projects. All right. Its purpose is to contribute to the economic growth and development of member countries and to promote economic cooperation and integration. And of course, we have a list of the main functions of CDB, but the main thing is to provide financial assistance. All right. But sometimes it provides technical assistance, promote private and public investment in development projects, stimulates and encourage development of capital markets within the region, mobilize additional financial resources for the Caribbean region. So the CDB would reach out to other institutions like FAO and the EU and whoever else and try to collaborate and help with developing projects financially in the Caribbean. Then you have the University of the West Indies, my alma mater, the Pelican. University of the West Indies, and of course, that is the fac Faculty of, of Science and Agriculture, offers a wide range of courses to teach you about agriculture in different fields, you know, chemistry, um, economics, farm product, ag food production, food processing, etc. So it's about educating the people. Then you have one of the, one of the biggest institutions in the region, CADI, the Caribbean Research and Development Institute, CADI. Now, retain the name, research CAD is one of the the most integral institutions in the region as it relates to research CADI conducts research and demonstrates the appropriate technologies for farmers CADI provides technical assistance in areas such as crop production integrated pest management and farming systems livestock and forage so CADI will tell you how to do certain things they offer technical assistance Environmental and soil management technology, example, the supply of quality plants and products and genetic products and services, market research, statistics service. So CARDI would be one of them who would help to in breeding programs to upgrade the, the animals in the region, those kind of things. CARDI does a lot of research in the region. And of course, you have CASE, College of Agriculture Science and Education, that's in Jamaica. And again, that's an agriculture school. Then you have Guyana School of Agriculture and next agriculture school. Then you have international institutions such as the EU, European Union, and of course they help with they help the Caribbean in terms of financial assistance and technical assistance, and also with you know they assist in trading among member states with the Caribbean, which you know Car you know Caricom will jump on that because this is also a trading block. Then you have AICA or the Inter American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. This is a big one in the Caribbean region. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture, AICA, is an international institution for agriculture research and graduate training in tropical pro agriculture. AICA supports and encourages agro, energy, and biofuels, biotechnology, and biosafety, rural communities, trade and agribusiness, trade and negotiations, institutional moderation, institutional modernization, technology, and innovation. So AICA simply helps the Caribbean in developing the agricultural product, make it more mature, help us to reach on a more uh, global level as it relates to quality. Then, of course, you have the big dog, the FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization. That's a big cheese when it comes to agriculture in the world. In the gl uh, that's a United Nations um, institution. It's the United Nations arm for helping to cure, to, 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 to um, solve world hunger, and as such, Agriculture is a key engine for that. So the FAO, 
of the United Nations leads international effort to defeating hunger. It helps countries to modernize and improve agriculture, forestry, fishery practices, and ensure good nutrition for all. Within the organization, there are departments for agriculture and consumer protection, economic and social development, fisheries and aquaculture, forestry, natural resources and management and, and environment, and technical cooperation. So FAO is a big dog when it comes to agriculture in the world. It's a UN arm for defeating hunger, and as such, they do a lot, a lot in the world. You can't go anywhere in the Caribbean without hearing the contributions of FAO. They have sponsored a lot of programs, especially when talking about sustainable agriculture, FAO is there. When you want to, you know, make a bid for a project, FAO is ready to help financially. And of course, you have the OAS, Organization of American States. So what is that? The Organization of American States is basically similar to the FAO in a sense, but for the Americas, North America and the Caribbean. So uh, let's see what I say here. The goal, of, the goal of member nations was to achieve an order of peace and justice to promote solidarity, to strengthen collaboration, and to defend sovereignty, territorial integration, and independence. It seeks to promote economic, social, and cultural development and eradicate extreme poverty. So it's just that it's, it's like a sub branch in a sense of. So they have similar missions to the FAO, but within the Americas. Then, of course, you have the Inter America Development Bank, and of course, just like the Caribbean Development Bank, its main aim is to help financially with various agricultural projects in Latin America, the Caribbean, in the Americas. Then you have the Canadian International Development Agency, CIDA, and so those are some of the lesser known ones, but all, all in all, all these are international institutions that aid with agriculture in the region all right so we're gonna study here for now so we were we would have covered majority of section 2.1 discuss the importance of agriculture in the region and international economies we discussed that and also we looked at you know different aspects of agriculture importance and also careers in agriculture and also institutions that aid in agriculture so we have, we have basically covered that section one and two in a nutshell with this first lecture all right so we're going to look at others later on uh but that's it for now so all you have to do now is of course like subscribe and we are going to do more agricultural videos especially now when we know food security is vital for the Caribbean region. All right, so that's it for now. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a next agricultural lecture would have dropped.